So I took a month's vacation, and I had a truck, flatbed truck, and I, I'll do some work with my flatbed truck, and I started uh, doing some moving furniture and stuff with uh, uh, a local realtor here, David Nero was the guy's name. But I laid a fleece out before the Lord. I said, Lord, uh, if you'll take care of me, then I'll leave my job because I want to be in church. And in two weeks of the month's vacation, I knew that God was going to take care of me, so I phoned back to one grid and said, I won't be building bodies strong ways anymore, 12 ways anymore. Two months later is when God uh, called me to do his work as a minister. It was never a plan. It was just simply what God did. In this case, in the Gospel of Mark, <clears throat> If you look also uh, in verse uh, 19, 18 says, They immediately left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brothers who, were, uh, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after Jesus. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus is beginning his ministry and he walks by a tax office. Chapter 2, verse 14, as he passed by, he saw Levi, that is Matthew, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as he was dining at Levi's house, that is Matthew's house, that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. But when the scribes and the Pharisees, that's the religious leaders, saw him eating with tax collectors and sinners, they said to the, to the disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Isn't it good that, that Jesus has a mission to reach a lost world? And that lost sinners or whoever we are as people falling short of God, that is who God intends to reach. And he calls men such as Matthew and John and, and James and Moses and others to impact or to encourage others. Sometimes I feel like an Amway salesman. I think I've mentioned that before. I might call on somebody. I might knock on somebody's door. And uh, I'm not selling anything. But I am presenting something. I'm presenting the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that Christ can enrich anybody's life. But sometimes in my humanity I'm thinking about, well, how will people respond to, to what I do? Or if I go to their house, how will they respond to me? I'm not an Amway salesman, but I am a, a I am. That is, God is a I am representative. So I, I want to impact people's lives. I am one part of the whole list of uh, individuals that God used to build the body of Christ up. If you turn back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. It said, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. I am essentially a pastor or a teacher. Sometimes you might bring in evangelists to come and, and speak. The apostles are the ones who uh, penned essentially the New Testament or were there to give guidance to the new church. The prophets are those in the Old Testament basically who God used. But look at the purpose in verse 12. 
for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So God's intent is that, is that we be a body and that body be built up. And that body exercise properly. And so he gives us these entities, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, so that we can be built up together. In 1976, Gail and I were in uh, a church a few miles from here. And we were there as, as young believers. And we were there as people who needed to know about God and to be taught about the things of the Lord. And so we spent years just maybe like you are, sitting and, and thinking about it and growing and maybe teaching also. We needed to be built up to be made strong. Now notice it's for the equipping. We can grow in our ability to be effective Christians. We need to be equipped. What if you went to a job site and they were going to build a home and they simply said to you, and you had no experience, and you said, they said to you, here's the lumber, here's the foundation, build the house. If you had no experience, how would that affect you? How would you start? Where would you start? What wood would you put on the bottom? How would you put the wood? Would you have any clue? Would you have any idea? Most of us would not. How do we learn how to build a house? Well, there's two ways. We either read a book, or somebody comes along and we watch that person and we get trained and equipped to do that particular task. 